I told Dyson I never touched his stupid design book, but that French bitch insisted I stole it. Ah, uh, you mean Lizette Jones. Her. I, I didn't even know what the portfolio looked like, but she kept insisting that as her assistant, I was the only one with access to it. So Dyson comes home all whacked out on X or booze or whatever, mm -hmm. and he starts pissing and moaning. He says his designs are worth a zillion dollars and that he's gonna sue me if his fall collection's delayed, yada, yada, yada. Fine. Lizette's pretty hot, huh? Love hotline. Let me transfer you. Yeah, I'm just doing this home thing until I get a better gig. Right. Mm. So Dyson was, was p pissing and, and moaning, and then what happened? Well, I freak. And then they fire me. They don't pay me. And when I start to complain, he says he's going to threaten to sick the cops on me. Love hotline. <clears throat> Transferring. Listen, Jamie, if I was to look into your phone records, would I find any threatening calls made between you and Dyson? Well, maybe my husband, Miguel, might have made a call or two. But I mean, he just gets really ticked off when people mistreat me. But would he do any serious damage? No way. What were you two doing last night? Me, I was at home watching Frasier with my sister, and Miguel was working till, like, 9. Working? Yeah, St. Barnaby's Cemetery. He's a sculptor, but he digs graves on the side to make ends meet. Oh, yeah. He didn't do anything wrong, Mr. Lennox, honest. Listen, you've been real nice. Why don't I get one of my love hotline girls to give you a call? <laughs> nah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, I mean, well, you, you don't have my number anyway. I bet Mademoiselle Lizette does. Love hotline, transferring. Ladies, I want you to meet Gina Dominic. She'll be working with you on the Victor Tucker case. I didn't know we were working on the Victor Tucker case. As of now, you are. Gina's been brought in because of her unique background with Tucker. And that is? I was sleeping with a little puke. Gina was a former FBI agent. She was working undercover as an exotic dancer while investigating Tucker. Oh, that must have been annoying. You had to nail the guy to nail the guy, and you still didn't nail him. Wait a second. Okay, got it. I'll tell you what was annoying. Working for a department that dropped the ball when I handed them the case on a silver platter. So what do you do now? I operate a metal stamping machine that produces automobile identification. I make license plates. Gina's serving a three-year sentence at Terminal Island. She had some internal problems at the FBI. The spineless jerks didn't like that I wanted to take Tucker down for killing my partner. They didn't have the proof. Oh, they had the proof. What they didn't have was a guts. Enough. Your assignment is to bring in Tucker, but not without the drug he used on Shane. Wait a minute. I'm not going the exotic dancer route. Not this time. You and Dee Dee will pose as bartender and waitress. Gina will go undercover as the dancer. He means stripper, sweetheart. You don't have a problem with that? Nope. The more you take off, the easier men are to control. You're to make sure Gina doesn't lose her focus. It's got 48 hours written all over it. Don't worry. I can't ditch you. They microchip me like a dog at the pound. So, which one of you is doing the warden? Oh, you know, it depends on the day of the week. None of us are doing it. Good. Wouldn't want to intrude on anyone's game while I'm here. Cross isn't really that kind of guy. Uh, trust me. Every guy is that type of guy. He just hasn't seen anything around here he wants. Yeah. 